Okay, it's 12.01, let's, uh, let's get started. I'm just gonna put everyone on mute. Welcome everyone, it's the Friday edition of 15 Minutes of Positivity. I always like to think of you know, what would be a good uh, send off for the weekend. So the theme that I've been personally bumping into um, is inspired by this quote here by Marie Curie, who's one of my personal heroes. So nothing in life is to be feared, it is only to be understood, and now is the time to understand more so that we may fear less. And so I'm, I'm interchanging fear or just the relationship between fear and anxiety is an interesting one. I, I think of anxiety as almost being like fear of fear in the future, right? Fear is a, fear is a normal biological response that helps us survive, helps our ancestors survive. It's, it's a very useful um yeah, re reaction or emotion. I don't. I don't know what to what to label it specifically. But then the fear of having fear in the future is what I would call anxiety, and that can quickly amount to um, something that can be be pretty dysfunctional. And so, um, you know, one of the techniques that I've found is is incredibly helpful is to be able to pose this question when in the grips of some kind of anxiety. So, um, and I ask myself this actually several times a day as I go through my life, who would you be without that belief or who would you be without that thought? And I think it highlights the sense that in any given moment, if we're actually aware and, and cognizant of what's, what's going through our mind, we have the ability to question and just inquire that just because we're thinking it, just because we're believing it in the moment, doesn't make it true, doesn't make it useful, doesn't make it even actionable. And if you consider that, you know, throughout the day, we literally have tens of thousands of these thoughts. I once did the calculation and thought to myself, okay, let's say we experience, you know, a thought or two uh, every second and you do the math, assuming that we got eight hours of sleep, so you got 16 hours of being awake. You do the math on it, it ends up being, you know, anywhere from 25 to, you know, 40 plus thousand of these experiences that we call thoughts, right? They, they just flash through our mind. And if we're not careful and we just buy into everything that just shows up in our mind, we can either end up in a world that's supremely blissful, but it can also be pretty miserable. And so this um, this ability to pause and question, wait a second, who who would I actually be if I in this moment didn't have the capacity to actually hook into or buy into the specific thought can be a really useful technique. So I'd love to send you all off this weekend with this this idea or this um, this practice sort of installed in your in your nervous system. So. Yeah, so let's play around with this idea. I'm taking taking a little bit of a leap of faith here that this is going to work out, but I, I hope it's I hope it's a, a useful experiment. So let's just start off by closing our eyes and dropping into here and now. We have about ten more minutes left. So let's spend the next ten minutes being as present as we can. Noticing your body breathing, noticing the body, the space and time. So sitting in your, the chair or if you're laying down, wherever you find yourself, just see if you can be there. If you notice the mind feeling distracted, that's yeah, okay. Sometimes it takes a little bit of time to slow down and become present. Another 60 seconds to arrive.
touching into this reality that right here, right now, is actually all we've got. The past is done. It's just a literally a bunch of neurons firing in our brain, giving us this illusion of memory or the past. And then the future hasn't happened yet. So right here, right now, this is actually what is. And then we're going to explore some, some core beliefs here that many of us carry. So the first one is, I want you to think of someone in your life who's doing something that you just don't quite agree with or that feels stressful for you. And I want you to connect with the underlying belief or statement um, that you're carrying around with you. So he should or she should or they should, what is it that you're telling yourself that they ought to be doing differently than they are? Let's see if you can complete the sentence in your mind, you know, they should, what should they be doing differently? And then when you find that thought or that specific statement, just hold on to it. And now part of this inquiry is, I want you to notice first and foremost, is this a stressful thought or is it a peaceful thought? If it's a stressful thought, what is it about what they should be doing that's difficult for you. Like what's the price you're paying for holding on to this this thought or this belief? And now I want you to imagine yourself not being able to even hold on to this thought. So who would you be if in this moment you couldn't believe this thought that they should be doing whatever it is that your mind said that they should be doing or shouldn't be? So who would you be without this thought? And then we can sort of move on to a, to another commonly held core belief, which is life would be better if everyone just, I don't know, fill in the blank. What is it that everyone else should or shouldn't be doing? And see if you can get specific about that statement. And then again, noticing how do you react when you believe that thought? That if everyone else just did this or did that or changed the way they were, how does that affect you? And where in your body do you feel that belief? And again, posing the question, who would you be if you couldn't think this or if you couldn't believe this?
But who would you be without the thought or the belief that life would be better if everyone else just did what your mind believes they should be doing? And just notice there's no right or wrong in any of this. It's just a, it's just inquiry. It's just exploring. So I have, I have one more here. So fill out the, the rest of the statement. I should be more. What is it that you believe about yourself? That should be different than it is. You should be more. And then again, the first step is once you have the statement or when you ha once you have the belief, is notice what the, what the cost is to believing this. Where in your body do you feel that? And how does it feel to hold on to this sense that you should be more or less or different than the way that you actually are? It's stressful. Is it painful? And now, just as a as an experiment, imagine who would you be without this belief or this thought that you should be more. Would your experience of yourself or life or just existence change if you couldn't believe that thought? Okay, let's take a deep breath in. Exhale all the way. Empty your lungs and then hold the exhale for five, four, three, two, one. Another deep inhale through the nose. Exhale all the way. And then hold for five, four, Three, two, one, and open your eyes. Welcome back to the session. We're almost out of time, but I, I hope this, this thought experiment wasn't too esoteric or strange. And if, if it felt a little, a little off or hard to connect with, I just encourage you to keep leaning into this. We call it inquiry. And it's just, it's just a thought experiment, right? It's just, just holding on to we're realizing that when we just believe everything that our mind thinks, it can lead to a tremendous amount of suffering and heartache. There's a path through this to just be able to pose the question and say, who would I be if I couldn't think this or if I couldn't believe this right now? And there's some, there's some freedom on the other end of that. Anyway, I hope this was helpful. I'll stick around for a few more minutes if anyone wants to connect. Have a great weekend, everyone. See you on Monday, hopefully.